So if you now would ask me what should you with your song pick, label or release it yourself, I'd go with label, 100%. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Today, it's not all about me sitting in the studio 24 seven. Since the virus thing is still going on, there is not much to do. Like I actually prefer my weekdays because I at least can stay in the studio, make music, the weekends, just like doing a bunch of stuff at home that is quite boring. So I'm today mostly taking care of business stuff. There's a lot of things that I have to take care of. My new song, Do To You, that you just heard in the intro, is ready for mastering. A release date is scheduled for mid to end next month. And this time I'm actually releasing it on another label, not my own label an independent label that is quite successful on Spotify. And you know, whenever I got a song ready, there are always two options, release it myself or release it on someone else's label. There are a lot of pros and cons and like everything always goes through my mind. It really depends on the song. It really depends if you can even find a label for that song or if it's too weird or too different or doesn't fit to any label or maybe it fits to a label, but just a big label where you can't reach anyone. That's usually what goes through my mind. And yeah, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages of self-releasing or releasing with someone else. So let's maybe talk about those pros and cons, um, but let me actually switch the room because this one right here has that nasty, nasty rework. I mean, we just moved here a couple of months ago and there's still like, there's art missing everywhere. But at least we got a new carpet, which is really, really, really cozy. Actually my favorite spot in the entire apartment at the moment. So the biggest pros of releasing on a label is you don't have to pay anything up front. Yes, they will take a cut. Yes, they might take a huge cut. But if you don't have any money, the label is actually the better option. Releasing without any money yourself is the worst you can do. It's basically just uploading it to Spotify and see what happens. That's not how music promotion works. You have to put money into it or have the right contacts. A label provides those for you. So no upfront costs at all. A label has a huge network, a lot of experience, people that they employ, they're doing this already for years. They definitely are more knowledgeable than you. They will take that song, send it to the right people, well connected. They will have all of the promotion channels already, will trade playlists, will even invest money into your song, into the promotion of your song, and still no cost for you upfront. The biggest factor for me personally of pros for a label is then also that you don't lose any time. As an artist, as a musician, time is valuable and you want to spend that time making creative works that no one else can do. Why waste your time with something that someone else can do? And by having a label, like all of that time that you might spend, and this can be like 50 to 80% of your time if you self-release, that's all the label's part to take care of. Then also you're benefiting of the image of that label. Let's say you release on Spinin big, huge electronic dance music label, people will value your music differently. A lot of people don't know exactly what good or bad music is, so they just go by the brand it's affiliated with. If you release with a big label, it's a proof that your stuff is legit and that it's good and this can boost your career immensely. But let's get to the cons of releasing with a label and those really hurt. They will take a huge cut of your song. An independent label will take at least 50%. A huge major label might take up to 80% of your song and you are only left with like a small, small cut. So if it becomes a huge hit, you're, you're the one that makes the least of it. But on the other hand, maybe due to their work, it got big and turned into a hit. And you can still make the next song and make it as good and have the next hit and just do it yourself or with someone else. Then of course, the song belongs to the label for 10, 20, 30 years, it's theirs. They just promise you to give you a cut of whatever the song makes, but it's legally speaking theirs. They decide if it ends up in an advertisement for TV, 
they decide which countries it's being released it, they they have like the full control which again can be good because you spend less time dealing with that stuff but they might do something that you're not really interested in or maybe place your song somewhere where you don't want it to be placed and then of course you have to agree to all of their terms usually contracts are really long they might ask you for promotional stuff promotional instagram spotify little clips um, provide your social media to them so they can place things that's also all part of, of a huge contract. And then the biggest cons are definitely that it might happen that you don't get paid. The bigger the label, the less likely it is. The smaller the label, the more likely that you actually won't get paid. It's extremely hard and frustrating to get signed to a bigger label, especially as a beginner. You just don't have the profile, the experience. Your songs might not be that good. So like the, the entrance to a good label is, is really hard and they are not just looking for one song, they're looking to sign an artist because they only make money if you deliver them at least four or five songs per year because they invest in you, they sign a track, invest money into promoting you and the song and will probably with the first one, two, three songs make a loss but then song four, five, six might actually make the money back because your profile is pushed enough. That's also why most labels will have options in their contract. So whenever you sign to them, you also agree to sign the next three to five songs or maybe the next three albums also with that label. Again, so they can recoup the money they invested in you. And then the worst that a label could do for you is doing absolutely nothing. And this happens a lot it happens with small labels big labels they all do it especially nowadays with spotify being the big thing a lot of labels can't really control the streams it's really hard to do it connections aren't really helping because most of the spotify curators try to place the songs without listening to anyone to keep it fair there is an algorithm in place that is extremely fair because no one controls it really directly and due to all of that a lot of labels just sign a song where they think it has potential release it see and wait what happens if it gets a little steam that's proof for them that the song is special and it works and then they might start push it but a lot of times they just don't do anything I know people that have releases on huge labels. I even have like a release on Universal Music. They didn't do anything and the song is stuck at like, I don't know, 150,000 place at Spotify, which isn't bad, but for a major label, that's a joke. So then let's get actually to the self-releasing advantages and disadvantages. A lot of these are just basically the opposite from releasing with a label. If you release it yourself, you have full control. You keep all of the rights. You keep all master royalties. So every single cent the song makes is yours. No cut. You can make your own rules. You can release the song on which kind of stores you want to release it. You can make it exclusive for certain countries. You can make different prices for every single country if you're interested in that. Like there is a lot of freedom for you to place the song in the way you want to place it. You can make your own cover. Some artists are really like, they want the cover to look exactly what they have in mind. So doing it yourself might give you more control. But again, adds up to the cost or time lost. And then you getting paid, very, very likely. Distributors always pay. They do it automatically. I've never heard anyone tell me that a distributor didn't pay it might happen that you have a huge delay. For example, me right now, I'm still waiting for a huge chunk of money of all of my releases on my own label because the distributor is um, like due to the virus situation, they don't have the numbers for the last couple of months of the last year. But it should be there in, in a couple of weeks, hopefully. And then the cons are the really big ones. You have to pay yourself, your time, promoting is your task and if you've never done it you don't have a clue you don't have the context like doing all of this yourself will take so much time and it will be only worth it if you do it for a lot of years you basically have to run a label just for you which is usually not worth it once you get good connections good spotify placements and all of that it actually makes sense to just also release other people's music on your label because like having all of these contacts just for yourself, your own music, and I mean, how many songs can you make per year that are top-notch good quality? 
So yeah, if you self-release eventually, you're running a label. And you have to build your own following, of course, do all of the social media. The beginning is extremely, extremely, extremely hard, harder than you might be able to imagine. All of that legal stuff, which is highly complicated, highly annoying. If you get a lawyer, highly expensive, is all yours. You have to take care of it. Very, very, very annoying. And then the last is the distributors. You have to work and deal with them directly. They usually all, or pretty much, yeah, actually, yeah, all of them, they have really bad service. Like if you try to reach them, change something, good luck. So if you now would ask me, what should you with your song pick? Label or release it yourself? I'd go with label, 100%. Make a song, make it good enough that it competes, send it out to labels, at least 100 emails with like, hey, that's my demo, that's me, you listen to it. If no one gets back to you after three months, then listen to the song again, think, think really hard if the song's good enough and if you're proud of it. If you still think it's good and you're proud of it, release it yourself. I did exactly the same with my two most successful songs, All About and Dawning. Dawning passed 3 million plays on Spotify, All About, I think 2.2, 2.5 million plays. I sent them out to all dance labels, deep house labels, and all of them said, no thanks, we're not interested. Which really hurts, but then I listened again to the songs and I thought like, no, I think these songs are worth it to be released. These songs are good enough to be shared with the world. So I released them myself, did a little bit of promotion, and they got featured in Spotify playlists. The algorithm pushed them to more and more people. The people seemed to like it. It got pushed to more and more and more people. And eventually, like I sent out the song to Armada back then. They said, no, not interested but the song reached then over a million plays and then they got back to me and asked me if they could <laughs> sign the song to them. I then said no, because the song was already performing really good, but we agreed on that song being released on one of their compilations. So All About is now released on my label, self-released, but then later on got picked up by an Armada compilation, which is really nice. And, and those two songs opened a lot of like ways and possibilities for me. And ever since everything is a lot easier. So yeah, worst case before the song, rottens on your hard drive and all of your hours that went into making it aren't being listened to by anyone, release it yourself. But it should be the second option, trust me. It's a lot of work. Anyways, I hope this helped you. Let me know if you release with labels, if you always self-release, if you tried with labels, never succeed and then self-release it your experience with labels and releasing it yourself. And yeah, we'll see us tomorrow back again, full vlog, me in the studio making music tomorrow.